Granny. Good night, Sandy. <laughs> come to the show and tell portion and you're going to share your favorite cooking utensil oh yeah this is my favorite i use this thing almost every day at anything on this side and if mama has to have something uh like the peel of an orange or something i use this side and this is the mandolin side, but I don't ever use it. And then if you need a little bit of uh, ginger or something where you got the root, but I use this. I can't do without this tool. How long have you had that particular one for? I think this has been in the house ever since I've been born. I think that was your mommy's, don't you? I think that was my mama's. <laughs> I'm glad you learned to use it, so I don't have to now. <laughs> I probably need a new one, not because I don't know how you could ever sharpen these. But this is well used. Oh, what you bring, Dixie? This is my ice cream scoop. <laughs> And I'm that's, telling, the only, that's the only thing that kept me ever sold it in good. That bottle opener. Yeah, the the, your ice cream don't day. stick to it and it makes a perfect circle. Mm -hmm. Don't it, Mama? And me and Ed uses it. this every night or two, three times a week when I've we make our ice cream Sundays. I love it. And where's that one from? Pamper Chef. That's Pamper a Pamper Chef. chef. But you I've had this. Make them no, more. no, I've had this for years and years. I have too. And it's a really good ice feeder. And then this is my gravy stir. I love my gravy stir. And I use it on cream pies too, so they start getting really thick and then I'll switch over to a wooden spoon. But I use this all the time for gravy and cream pies. And then this is Mama Purries. And this is what I scrape my carrots and stuff with. Now they make these, but there's none not like, like a handle like there's none like this one because the newer ones that they make, it takes more of your vegetable away. This right here doesn't. It just takes the skin and all, and that's all it tastes. So this is my favorite one. This is from Mama Purdy's. I don't know how I ended up with it, but I did. Oh. And well, you probably went up there and got it. Well, I was living there, so I probably did. But anyhow, <laughs> this thing uh, has to be, I know, at well, least 100 years <laughs> old. Well, anymore, I don't even use it. I should give it to me or Cindy to even know from my drinks. But that's what we... I Turn it around. It's, it's a can opener. No, you open a bottle opener. A bottle opener. And this is my gravy stew. Bigger, but that's what I start my gravy with. When I make it, I get that from Mick. I don't make gravy. <laughs> well, if I start at Mick's house, I hand it him. Let him make it because he makes better gravy than I do. You trained him well. Yep, I trained all both <clears throat> my boys can cook. Mick's a good cook. Both my boys are good cooks. They can cook. Better me, probably. I cannot get an iron skillet out of the oven or with my hands. I mean, he has to do, has to do all the dirty work because he has to get the skillet out and dump the bread. Now, I can my little skillet, but I can't my big one if I make cornbread or upside down cake or anything like that. Mitch me has to get it out for me. <laughs> Alligator nuggets, mm -hmm. they were really, really good. Mm -hmm. So we eat alligator nuggets. Well, Eddie found out we liked them real good, so he went to the, where they sold all that fish and alligator and all that stuff, and he bought some alligator meat and brought it back home, you know, and they thought we was gonna have it next night. He grilled that alligator. Oh Lord, the more I eat, Chewed that alligator to be real. <laughs> finally, I took it out of my mouth and snuck it in my pants. <laughs> well, 
And even then, I told Leon, Leon said, did you look at all that? I said, Leon, I put, took it out of my mouth and put it down in my breech. <laughs> <laughs> he said, if we start home and you have stuck up the car with that alligator in your pocket, <laughs> said, I'm going to put you out and make you walk. Boy, we used to have so much fun, me and him and Greta. <laughs> I'd laugh at him and Rita because no, he would, she'd get on to him and she'd complain. Oh, she, her legs is hurting me on oh, my legs. Are, they're killing me. I gotta get out. Well, we got up on this big old shopping center. <laughs> he pulled in the shopping center and told her, said, we'll get out and walk a little bit. Well, he pulled all around the shopping center to the other end. She had to walk all the way around. <laughs> then you would go back and get her. Oh, she is mad at him. <laughs> oh, he used to do everything to her. That sounds about right. <laughs> Hi, ain't Cindy here today. And I am going to take this butternut squash and I'm going to make some squash soup. These are beautiful squash. They make beautiful decorations. So, hang out with me for a while and we'll see what we come up with. Now, butternut squash is very hard to peel. It's got a very thick skin. Now, I have up. up protective mat down and be very careful cutting these because I have cut a time before There's the top part off. Very, very tough skin. What keeps all that goodness inside the squash. Okay, I finally got this thing cut open. And it just has a few seeds. Not a lot of seeds like pumpkins. We're going to scrape them out. We're going to put them in a bowl. We may roast them. Or we just may put them up for starter seeds for next year. Now get these scraped out and cleaned. I'm going to lay them on a lined baking dish. Well, a sheet pan with parchment paper. And I'm going to bake them in the oven till they're tender, about 35 or 40 minutes on 350. Okay, got my squash on the pan, and I'm going to put it in the oven, and I'm going to check it in about 30 minutes to see if it's fork tender. My squash is baked 30 minutes. So I've cut a, a half of an onion and two halves of apples. And I'm going to put them in here with my squash. And then I'm going to put them back in the oven and bake it for another 30 minutes. Okay, our butternut squash is out of the oven and it's tender. I've let it cool a little bit. I'm going to do this in two batches. I'm going to scoop out the inside and put it in a blender. Put one of my onions and half of my apple and uh, blend it together with some other stuff. So when I get this filled up, get back. Okay, I've got my Half of it uh, 
scooped out and half of my onion and two pieces of my apple. So to this, I'm going to add a teaspoon of cinnamon. One cup of chicken stock, chicken broth. If you don't want to use chicken, you can do vegetable broth. And a splash of canned milk. I'm going to blend this together, and then I'll do the same thing with the second one. Okay, we've got the second batch mixed up. <clears throat> I think it looks creamy enough. I don't know. <clears throat> Taste it and see if we need anything. It's pretty good to me. We'll put it in a pot with the other. Here's my pot of butternut squash soup. Now I'm waiting for somebody to come taste it. How do you like my soup? Well, I'm going to wait for you to It tastes good, but it's like the texture of baby food. I'm just saying. But it is good. Pretty close to a squash pie, isn't it? Yeah. Get that bell icon.